Hello and welcome to another dose of muscle medicine. I'm Dr. Owen, a medical doctor, chemist and fitness instructor. And in today's video, I'm going to address the concerns surrounding creatine supplementation and water retention. Spoiler alert, it might actually be good for your aesthetic. So quickly, what is creatine? Creatine is one of the most popular and most researched fitness supplements on the market. It helps gym goers and athletes to perform high intensity muscular work through the phosphocreatine or phosphagen energy system as explained in another video titled How Creatine Works. The reason for this video is to address the widespread concern about creatine causing water retention. Part one, does creatine cause water retention? The answer is yes, absolutely. Creatine, much like salt, is osmotically active, i.e. it draws water towards it. We witness this outside the body in the kitchen if ever we leave the lid off either substance. Both draw in water, in this case from the water vapor present in the air, towards them, turning what was once a fine powder into some sticky clumps. Part two, how will this affect my body? Okay, so that sounds pretty troubling, but the important difference is that salt is stored under the skin all throughout the body. And salt driven fluid retention therefore leads to a widespread loss of definition of muscle tissue by hiding them under a slightly thicker layer of water than it would otherwise be the case. Like salt, creatine draws water towards it. This is where the similarity ends because 95% of the body's creatine stores are inside our muscle tissues. Therefore, any additional water retention that occurs through creatine supplementation is only going to affect the muscle tissues. Any consequent water retention in the muscles themselves can be viewed as an aesthetic gain as opposed to an, uh, an aesthetic loss. Also, we know that creatine supplementation only increases our muscles' normal creatine levels, which are a result of the creatine we eat plus the creatine that our kidneys and liver produce for us. So any difference in aesthetic is unlikely to be very large. Moreover, there is good reason for the additional fluid retention in the muscles, and that is that water is a substrate in the energy producing reaction of converting ATP into ADP that drives all muscle contraction. So better hydrated muscles, as well as perhaps looking a little bigger, also perform better. This leads us nicely on to part three, which is, will I lose all my gains when I stop taking creatine? There are two parts to this answer. Yes, you will lose the extra water held in your muscles by extra creatine and end up going back to a slightly lower amount of water in the muscles due to slightly lower creatine levels when you're no longer supplementing. But no, you won't lose the extra muscle you've built by having creatine supplementation help enable you to hit that extra repetition or two or slightly higher weight each time you go to the gym. Just as importantly, meta-analyses and systematic reviews, the highest quality of scientific data we have, have repeatedly found that creatine is a safe product when consumed at recommended doses over many years. So there is no need to stop taking it or cycle off it. Part four, what are those recommended doses you mentioned? Well, the International Society of Sports Nutrition has this to say on how to dose creatine. The quickest method of increasing muscle creatine stores appears to be to consume 0.3 grams per kilogram body weight per day of creatine monohydrate for at least three days, the loading phase, followed by three to five grams per day thereafter to maintain elevated stores. Part five, are there any downsides? Well, the rather unpleasant and common creatine side effects of mild dehydration and constipation come from the fact that if we don't increase the amount of water we're putting into our bodies and we do increase how much of it is ending up in the muscles, there's less water to go around elsewhere. This can easily be remedied by increasing our water consumption. During the loading phase, when you're having high doses of creatine, you may have to significantly increase your water consumption. But thereafter, when you're just having three to five milligrams per day, you can usually offset this effect and minimize the risk of side effects by making sure that you stir in your creatine supplement into a large glass of water. The only athletes for whom this muscle specific water retention is likely to be a problem are those that are attempting to lose significant weight for sports that involve a weigh-in and they'll only likely stop taking creatine in the run-up to the weigh-in as they too will otherwise like to benefit from the performance enhancing benefits it offers. That's all for today's video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. If you have, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you. Bye.